You know, it's crazy. It's a little over 48 hours later, and we're still talking about the Scott Demore firing, uh, being his being relieved of his duties from TNA wrestling because there's a genuine outrage from fans, wrestlers, just everybody involved. Scott is irreplaceable. And clearly Anthem feels that he is replaceable. Now there's been more news coming out about him trying to purchase TNA. And maybe you guys can help me help clear this up for me because I don't know if I was reading a Meltzer article because when Meltzer speaks on his podcast and they transcribe it, it's often very difficult to follow. I don't think he's a a really crystal clear speaker. So I was not quite understanding the timeline of all this. Did he try to purchase the company? They said um, that he knew his, his, his time was short or something like that. Did he pe- try to purchase the company because he knew his time was short? So he tried to, you know, get out ahead of things and purchase or was his time short because he made an unsuccessful bid to buy the company? And then they decided to move on away from him. It seems that those at Anthem and Scott just had different visions for how TNA should be run. And I think where the conflict is, is that I think Scott knows how TNA should be run. I think Anthem has a vision for how a wrestling company should be run. And what I mean by that, if they had a startup company, if it was just you know a brand new wrestling promotion, I think they have a certain vision. But I don't think that vision is necessarily what TNA needs because they weren't there uh, from the beginning. They weren't there through the good and the bad necessarily. They came at the end and they're they're the reason the company exists. But um, the fan base has been around for much longer than Anthem has. And Scott is more in tune to what the fans want, what they want to see, and just what they want from the company and the levels they want it to reach. And Anthem just has their vision for how to run a wrestling promotion. And they're they're clearly different. But Scott is irreplaceable. And they thought he was. Not to get too much into a personal story, but my fa- father, um, he has for years and years and years ran nursing homes. Um, at one point, he, he owned three of them in Los Angeles before he moved out here to Las Vegas. And now he just kind of runs them. So at one point he was running a uh, facility in uh, in Las Vegas that was a, a veterans hospital, not the VA, but the it was a veterans nursing home. And there's only one or two one or two of those in every single state. So you you literally have to be the best to get those positions. You have to be one of the best to win you do guy in and business plummeted within three months and that guy they brought to replace them was fired or he might have quit but they just completely you know they completely shit the bed when what they had in place was working so i take it back to the this that anthem feels that you know they they have the person now to make this thing go want that they want scott they want people who are ingrained in the fabric of this company because scott is in tune with what we want there's some times i've I've criticized maybe he wasn't real real self-aware about a few things but for the most part he was in touch and he did a good job for a really, really, really long, long time. I'm already seeing fans on social media now get on there. Uh, and a lot of them reply to my tweets and they have no faces in their profiles. You know, oh, oh, you know, it wasn't Scott that, you know, was putting butts in seats and doing this. It was, you know, this guy they brought in to do marketing and they started listing names of people. I don't even know who the fuck they are. W- Scott is the face of this thing, or he was the face of this thing. And we're going to talk about that more here at the end when we talk about um, rebellion returning to the palms. 
But, you know, you I wonder what a, a TNA led or a Scott Demore led TNA would have been like. So it seemed like there was issues with the budget. And Scott wanted more and more. There was something that came out that they were they actually had an agreement with Braun Strowman uh, to appear at Bound for Glory, which I believe because it seemed like, <laughs> you know, Iceman, Iceman Intel, he was talking about that. They were going to brand it Brown. Braun for glory. And Anthem ultimately decided that was too big of an investment, that he was asking for too much. And I get that. Like, I run my own business. I had to tell a client today that, you know, we had to discontinue uh, something we were doing because I was losing money in that particular area. So I can understand not spending where you're not going to make your money back. But I also understand where to upscale and where to invest your money. So I don't think um, Anthem is in the wrong here. There's probably times where Scott just wanted to spend the money for the sake of the shock value uh, that it added to the show. But um, there's clearly a different, you know, Anthem saw things differently saying, hey, this is not, we're not going to get our return on investment on this. So I can, I can fully understand that. But from all these articles and things coming out, it seems like Anthem actually wants to cut spending. Like they want to, to go down. And the last time this happened, we lost EC3. We lost Bobby Lashley. We we lost James storm. We lost the identity of the company and, you know, they bounced back nicely. You know, they brought in the Brian cages and Tessa Blanchard and Sue young. And, you know, they brought people in that we were enjoying and we were excited about, but they started stripping down the overall identity. And this could have, that could happen here too. Fortunately, Jordan Grace, Moose, like they've just re-upped, you know, I think Josh Alexander might have just re-upped, but imagine these guys come in and say, hey, they make too much and they cut from the top. Then you got to start all over again. And and the fan base doesn't want that. That's the last thing that the fan base wants. But now the concern is that they're going to, you know, they're going to cut back instead of putting more money into the company. And that that's really concerning. I don't know how they operate with their budget. Um, I have a general idea because I've worked with budgets in, in the military and, and my guy, Mike Gilbert from Brace for Impact, he, he did a podcast um, talking about budgets and how they did them, how they do them in uh, the military. So I can relate to what he said and I, I understand it. And it makes more sense that Anthem says, hey, we can't pay, you know, um, the inspiration for for an entire length of a, of a contract, but we can afford for them for six months. And then when that six month is up, we can afford you to bring in this person. And the But the fans want everybody, right? The fans want multiple people, um, m- multiple high dollar athletes on the roster. And that's why I was saying once upon a time that you know, they, they're not going to bring in CM Punk because if they bring in CM Punk, then they have to bring in Will Ospreay and then they have to bring in this guy and this guy. And all of a sudden you're just spending money. So I can understand um, Anthem didn't want to go crazy, but I think we can all agree that there are areas they have to spend up on. You know, you, maybe you don't get a return of investment on production value, but, you know, but at the same time you do. Because more people are going to be apt to watch something that looks good and looks like really professional than to watch something that looks like crap. I watched um, NWA's debut on the CW app the other day. And frankly, they have better production value, in my opinion, than TNA. Um, actually, it's debatable. That's just my opinion. You, you could watch it and say, no, TNA's looks better. It's, it's, very, it's very debatable. But the way that their show looks um, in in ring, their backstage stuff is kind of odd too, like just like TNA's. But um, the the ring, the actual action looks a little crisper. You know, um, they don't they're not overdoing anything. You know, with the colors when they're editing. You know, so it, it's an easier watch uh, than certainly than what Impact had been recently. But you know, these are areas like maybe you don't get that initial in, to return on investment, but you do have to upgrade. 
so you you know clearly there was just frustration with scott you know like he we watch it as fans and we're like yo why don't they pay more for this guy why don't they do this and this and i think sometimes we we blame scott for that <laughs> you know i think we we I've, i was very guilty of that but you know he wasn't necessarily the the decision maker he was the one you know what's the phrase it was forced to make the chicken salad out of the chicken shit you know and he did a a pretty good job with that but the the biggest concern here is anthem appearing that that they need to cut back rather than put more money into the company because again as a business owner i understand where you got to spend money to make money and i don't know if they look at it like that because they have a history of you know purchasing distressed assets and really spending as little money as possible to turn a profit and i yeah that's the american dream though right but um i just don't think they have the mindset necessary for this company to like go to the next level they scott was getting him he was taking him to the next level i'm going to talk real quick here about their return to the palms now granted i'm not complaining too much about it because hey that's home for me i get to, i get to go again but i can't think of a wrestling promotion that's ever run the same venue twice in a row for pay-per-views and a lot of people found it odd that they didn't announce the next location during hard to kill they've done that forever you know um they run a pay-per-view and after the pay-per-view they announce where the next one is going to be and the faceless trolls on Twitter are saying, well, they had this booked a year in advance. I understand you can't just book something like the day before. They didn't book the Palms last week and then announce it. I'm, I'm fully aware of that. But they didn't book the Palms a year ago either. This is not a Legion Stadium. This is an auditorium in a hotel. When was it that Scott Demore said we're going to the fucking Palms? Wasn't it right before Bound for Glory? Maybe even if it was Slam Anniversary, I think it was the Bound for Glory time frame. Of course, I could be wrong. But they did not book this shit a year in advance, and I don't know a lot about booking venues. I know nothing about it actually, but I would imagine uh, you're, you're booking, you're attempting to book multiple venues. You know, I don't think you're just talking to one. Um, at a time because I, I just think of some other sports that I follow. And, um, you know, sometimes with the NBA all-star, it's kind of like, Hey, we're, it might be here, might be here, might be here. You know what I mean? So there's no doubt that they were probably talking to the palms, but I bet they had other venues as well that were willing to take the pay-per-view and they settled on the palms. And you notice the fan reaction to this is totally different than last time. And this is, again, the people come on Twitter, well, they have, you know, they've improved marketing and social media. You know, yeah, these are things that I, I have said myself. But if these guys were that good, why didn't they pack out Orlando? Hard to Kill was a mixture of good promotion, good marketing, good social media, and the fact that it was unlike anything in the history of the company. It was special. It was a special moment. Rebellion is their D pay-per-view. It's their fourth pay-per-view. It's the one they give the least shit about. It's usually, you know, depending on the year, usually it's Slammiversary, Hard to Kill, Bound for Glory, Rebellion. Maybe Rebellion gets up to number three sometimes and they shit the bet on Bound for Glory but in the, in, as far as how much they care about it. But to me, um, again, I don't know. Maybe they did book this out a year in advance. I, I I can't believe they did because, again, who would book the same venue two pay-per-views in a row? No one's ever done that. But to me, it looks like Anthem is saying, hey, uh, Orlando didn't sell, um, but the Palms did, so we're going to go back there. Like, they think it's just it, 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 as easy as that. And I don't think it is. I think it. I think it's more likely to look like Orlando than it is to look like hard to kill and snake eyes. Now we hope they pack the venue out. Absolutely. But uh, I really don't think it's going to do what, what they think it's going to. I think they had several venues, you know, several options and they decided 
you know, that's the reason they didn't make the announcement earlier when they did, you know, earlier than when they did. And then they just decided, hey, this is this is the one like, OK, Scott was not in charge of marketing, but Scott was the face of this thing. He was the head of this. He was the one that said, quote, we're going to the fucking palms end quote. And that was a phrase that made around social media and the wrestlers were excited and the fans got excited for it. It's a completely different fan reaction this time on social media. And there's a lot of delusional people who say, well, they, they'll do as good as they did for Hard to Kill. No, they're not. Again, we want them to do well. We absolutely want them to do well. But it's not going to do what it did before. It's, it's impossible. You don't, you don't have the names to do it. You don't have the Will Ospreay and, and uh, Okada. You, know, you, you don't have the rebrand to fall back on. There was a lot of creative social media they did up to that. Right now, we're back to posting matches of Deanna Peraza versus Ty Valkyrie. You know, so um, I again, I'm not totally complaining because I can go to the show, but it's just like usually when you announce a venue, like people are kind of excited about it, and and the only excitement is is the people saying, "Well, it was a great looking venue, it looked great on TV, and they did so well last time, so hopefully they do." Well, this time, like there's optimism because of that, but just something about this comes off very lazy. And the last thing I'm going to say is that it's extremely tone deaf to announce this after, you know, 48 hours after you've fired Scott Demore. They, they, what they try to do is create their own positive narrative, which I've many times told the company to do that. So I understand why they did it. But in this case, this, so they're not just covering up like, drama like there's not a wrestler backstage causing problems so then they announce something positive and get people to forget about it that's different the the negativity here is because the fan base is pissed and it's just tone deaf to just be like hey guess where we're going to the palms right after several months ago scott demore shouted we're going to the fucking palms it's it's tone deaf it's disrespectful it's it, it comes across like saying, hey, Scott, you did it. We can do it, too. And for those of you saying Scott's not the one who put the butts in the seats and did the promotion and all that, he was the head of this thing. He was the head. He was the face. He was the face of the whole movement going to the palms. He was the one on social media that the fans were looking to for what's next. What's next, Scott? Tell us. What's the next step for these pay-per-views? Like, what can we expect? The company's faceless now. It's fucking faceless. And it looks like uh, Tommy Dreamer and, and Gail Kim are going to step up big time. And uh, some people are, like, con concerned about them in, in uh, creative, or at least Tommy Dreamer. Like, I'm not concerned about Tommy Dreamer and creative. He's a great wrestling mind. I'm concerned about him on screen winning titles and main eventing shows, but I'm I'm fully on board with him behind the scenes. So what would a Scott Demore led company look like? I don't know. Would have been interesting. Maybe we'll find out one day. I hope we do. Because Scott didn't need the money. And he I think he made a hardball pitch because he didn't think they felt like they could afford to lose him. They disagreed. And I think they're going to learn really quickly that it's not that easy.